is it that opera singers can memorize hours of music in a foreign language? What about long recitals full of leader poetry? If you've clicked this video, chances are you're in panic mode <laughs> because you're a singer who needs to have some music and text memorized and stat. Don't worry, I've got you covered because this is the first video in a series of memorization strategies aimed at singers and not just classical singers, contemporary people. This is for you too if you have a big long uh, set list to memorize. This episode we are looking at different learning styles and the accompanying music memorization styles for each. Let's get started. So today's video is based around the VARC model. Now you've likely heard of the VARC model even if you think you haven't heard of the VARC model before. So it was developed by a psychologist Neil Fleming in 1987 and it identifies four types of learning styles. Visual, auditory, reading, writing and kinesthetic. Now most people are a combination of these four styles but more times than not you will have one predominant style of learning. More than 90% of teachers internationally believe that learning styles are a thing. But it's now been largely debunked by science. It's an attractive concept that gives kind of buzzfeed quiz energy, like, you know, what Harry Potter house are you? What learning style are you? The science says you're not going to learn information any better if you follow techniques that align with your learning style. And in studies, there was nothing to suggest that memorization happened any faster and students' test results didn't really improve. However, people do have a preference for how they process information. And if you find a technique that aligns with your preferences, you may find that your music study sessions are more enjoyable, which should help you keep focused and remain consistent. So first up, visual learning. Visual learners are individuals who prefer to take in their information visually. So be that with maps, graphs, diagrams or charts. However, they don't necessarily respond well to photos or videos. Rather, they need information using different visual aids such as patterns or shapes. The best way to present to visual learners is by showing them the relationship between different ideas visually. A large body of research indicates that visual cues help us better to retrieve and remember information. The part of the brain that's used to process words is quite small in comparison to the part of the brain that processes visual images. Students who also just repeated words did pretty poorly on recall as opposed to students who made visual associations with the words. Other studies have shown that visual learning strategies lead to a better recollection of memories than any other learning style. You may be a visual learner if you're skilled at observing your surroundings, you have a strong sense of imagination, that you may be artistic, and that you may find yourself mentally reading the score in your brain as if it were a photo. But the first visual learning strategy may be particular use to you if you find that you are someone with one of these more photographic memories. Now mentally going through the score as you're trying to remember what comes next takes a huge amount of processing and that can be quite slow and inefficient. You may also find that for whatever reason that uh, if you need to look at a different edition of the score and things aren't in the place you usually expect them to be that it can be quite discombobulating. Enter visual shorthand and symbols. So it can be useful to draw little pictures or symbols above the words of your score to act as memorization anchors. Now these will be completely personal to you. Whatever symbol makes sense for this particular word association. So you may draw a little picture that corresponds with the word itself, but if it's in a language you don't speak, your picture could relate to a word that sounds similar to one in your native language. For example, the word provar or to find in Italian, you could draw something like a treasure chest. So a treasure trove. Sounds like trove, sounds like trovar. And you want to find a treasure chest. Find, trovar. Don't worry about the symbols looking artistic or pretty, only you're gonna see these. And even if it just looks like a random squiggle, like you'll know what it means. <laughs> now here's a technique that you may use already, and that is highlighting the text of your music. Visual learners respond well to color coding. So you may choose to highlight the text in one color, the dynamics in another color, and your stage directions in another color again, or you know, whatever color coding system works for you. Now a fine tuning highlighter tip for you. Don't just highlight the text all like willy nilly in one stroke. Pay attention to your phrasing and pick up your highlighter where you intend to take breath. So each phrase has its own line of highlighter. Next, auditory learning. 
Auditory learners learn better when they take in information when it's either heard or spoken. Rather than thinking ideas through beforehand, they often say things out loud to help them process the information. Now there was a study in children that found that those who preferred an auditory learning style actually learned the words of songs faster. So maybe we can speculate that there's a link with adult singers as well. You may be an auditory learner if you're a good listener and storyteller, you prefer spoken directions, are distracted easily by background noises or silence, you may whisper to yourself while you're reading, you may talk to yourself, and you may have a particularly expressive voice. Now, given music is auditory, obviously you'll need to utilize some sort of auditory learning technique into your practice. The most obvious, of course, is listening to recordings of the music that you're learning. Now, listening to recordings, it does have its pros and cons. For pros, it's obviously a great tactic for auditory learners. It can quickly give you a sense of the melody without needing to note bash at the piano. It can give you an understanding of your piece within the greater context of the opera. You learn musical traditions that might not necessarily be in the score. And you can learn a lot and get inspiration from the great singers of history. The cons. A recording may have different cuts to what you need to learn. There may be possible inaccuracies or you may be tempted to emulate a certain sound that isn't your own. A happy medium can be using recordings as an auditory aid at the beginning of your learning process uh, to you know, just get your head around the music and then switch to another modality of learning. You can always revisit recordings at the end of the process to revise or to further understand certain aspects of you know, vocal approaches or style. And be mindful of the recordings that you choose, make sure that they're well trusted and use a lot of varied sources. Alternatively, you can record your own voice speaking the text. Now, it's useful to do this in a declamatory style as if you were an actor reciting the text and also in the rhythm of the music to make sure that you're learning it accurately first time round because unlearning rhythmic mistakes is just... Uh. <laughs> you can also record your singing lessons or coachings and listen back. There are also MIDI file resources and learning tracks available for purchase online. Or if you can't find one of your specific piece, many coaches can record one for you for a fee. In my opinion, that's well worth the money, especially if you need to learn like a whole role really quickly. Another strategy, if you have a very understanding family member or friend, you can turn your study session into a conversation. So you can speak the text out loud while your partner follows along the score and they can prompt you where you need it. Reading and writing learning. Reading and writing learners consume information best when it's in words, whether that's by writing it down or reading it. You may be a reading writer learner if you prefer reading by yourself rather than having someone read to you or listening to an audiobook. You like researching. You like words that have interesting or unique meanings and backgrounds. You enjoy using lists and ordering things into categories. You may read as a hobby and you may prefer to have closed captions on videos that you watch. Now the most obvious strategy in this learning style is to write out the text. However, how you choose to do that is up to you. The simplest is writing on a piece of paper or in a notebook, either looking over the text that you've written or you may like to write it out a bunch of times. But you may also like to write each phrase on its own flashcard. That's a technique that I'll cover in depth a little bit more in a future video. I personally like to use a whiteboard for memorizing text as I find not only does it fit like quite a lot at just a glance, but um, I also like being able to take the information in just a little bit more gently and diffusely from a distance you know, like rather than having my my head in a in a notebook the next technique is one that i like to call the coding method because it looks like a, a cool code um, i pinched this off another youtuber called lauren tothero who is an actor so i'll link her video in the description if you want to check that out now with the coding method you first read over some of your text a few times so it's not entirely unfamiliar and then you write down the first letter of every word so kind of resembles a code. So from here, try and read that text again just by looking at the first letter as a prompt. And when you feel like this has become a little bit easier, try reciting your text completely from memory without the letter prompts. Lastly, kinesthetic learning. Kinesthetic learners are individuals who prefer to learn by doing things with hand-on experience. Practical experience is preferred over theoretical concepts. Rather, they would be a physical, practical participant in something rather than sit and listen to a video. Singing is a kinesthetic experience in itself. I mean, you can read books about singing, you can watch tutorials, you can listen to recordings, but ultimately your learning really starts when you actually start physically singing. 
You may be a kinesthetic learner if you tend to get bored in a traditional classroom. You may like to build things and work with your hands. You might love experimenting and testing things. You tend to trust what you can experience firsthand. You may tend to gesticulate a lot or need frequent study breaks to keep your focus. So it probably goes without saying that a kinesthetic technique to memorize your music is to just sing it. You may have experienced this before if you're working on a piece in a rehearsal or with your teacher on book and purely by this repetition alone it's gone into your muscle memory and you've memorized it without really trying. However, if you don't have the luxury of time for this and you need to memorize something quickly, utilize more of your time physically singing in your preparation. Do make sure you mark though, not singing full voice all the time. As you know, that's a very, very good way <laughs> to tie yourself out. You know, be smart. Alternatively, you can associate each phrase with a gesture. So for example, uh, Rodolfo's aria in La Boheme. That might be where you touch your hand. That might be where you hold the hand in yours. Maybe at this point you make eye contact. Al buio non si trova. Shrug your shoulders, you know, that key's long gone. Trova. There's that word again. What does that mean? To find Italian expert. So if you are going with this approach, keep it flexible. You may need to do different moments in your staging. And if you do happen to do the same movements, they can't look practiced in. You need to be, you know, holding her hand for the first time every single time. In this vein, you can also visualize like an imaginary stage. So, you know, over here, I say this line, and then I'm so caught up in this thought that I just, I just have to move over here, and then I do this line. If you're a kinesthetic learner who needs to move and experience to learn, this may be of use to you. Lastly, you may like to conduct yourself, particularly if it's very early on in your learning process where you need to be very attentive to rhythmic accuracy. So there you have it all the learning styles, lots of strategies within each to get you on the way of learning your next musical project. So let me know down below, what learning style do you prefer? And more importantly, what Harry Potter house are you? I am a visual learner with a little bit of reading writing thrown in and I'm <laughs> a half above. It's taken me years to come to terms with that. If you got something out of today's episode, consider giving this video a like and I will see you in the next one. Bye!